What's up guys, Shane Starnes here with Droid Modder X. Today we're going to be taking a look at the beta update of Nougat on the Galaxy S7 Edge. So the first thing we'll do here is hop into settings. We'll go down to, I'll click on that Android 7.0 build number and you guys can see that we are on the official Nougat build. And here is the Easter egg. There's actually two options for Easter egg. You can do this marshmallow game or you can do the cat game which allows you to place things out you know food or treats and then the cat will come and you can actually capture cats all right so the first thing you'll probably notice here is a new notification layout on the lock screen of course you can swipe down to reveal more of the notification swiping up from the right gives you access to your camera of course swiping up from the dialer gives you access to your dialer then you do have access to your quick settings here as well if you pull down the notification shade you guys can see that you have quick access to your notifications. If I clear my notification, you guys can see uh, that mainly you just get a very basic notification panel here with one swipe. It just gives you access to the most important quick settings. Another swipe down gives you access to more quick settings as well as a search bar here. You have access to your search toggle. You have access to your settings and also your menu. And then you have access to your brightness slider. In Android Nougat, there is a new option that allows you to long press applications to give you other options. In standard stock Nougat, if you long press on the camera button, it gives you an option to take a selfie uh, and a few other options here. In this beta build, all we get is uh, just app info. So basically they're just laying the groundwork for the long press options. It's not officially built into this build yet, but it should be coming in the official build later on. Uh, even if we do it here with Evernote, we have a few more options here. You can put it to sleep, uninstall, or open up your app info. The same thing there with Stitcher. Like I said, this is basically just the groundwork for what this will become. So another really cool option built into Android 7.0 is the multi-window feature. We've had a split screen feature in Note devices before, but Android 7.0 builds that split screen feature into all Android devices. So the way you'd access that is pull up your recents and you'll notice this little option here. It looks like two little bars here or two little windows. You can either grab the application and drag it up or down, um, or you can just press the little button and that brings it to the top and then you can find the other app you want to open and just open it up and now you have access to two applications at once you can expand the size of the window to your liking so you can actually just make a pop-up window just drag it there to the middle and that gives you a pop-up window which you can also resize you can drag it around this way you still have your application and you can still use the rest of your phone screen and if you minimize it then it just gives you a little application icon. This will stay on your screen regardless of which application you open. So if you open your dialer, it's still here and it's just always accessible. As you can see here, these settings has changed quite a bit here. You can easily search for a setting within these settings. There's an option here to quickly edit your quick settings. So your, your toggles here, you can edit those quickly. And then everything here is in the list format, which just makes everything much easier to find. Of course, we have a little cleaner look here. Speaking of a cleaner look, as you can tell, the whole UI has been changed and we have a little bit different of a UI altogether with this cleaner look. If we go into an application like say the calculator, you can see that theme even more. Everything is just simplified and clean. Nougat adds some simplified usability features. If I open up my dialer, you can either swipe to the left to open up a text message, or you can swipe to the right to instantly call somebody. If I go into my text messaging application here by swiping over to the left, I can also very easily access my contacts. So you're able to easily go back and forth between the different applications without having to close an app and reopen an app. It just makes everything much simpler and much easier to access. So even applications like your gallery have a much more simplified setup. You have a tab view here where you can easily access your pictures or your albums or your stories. And then you also have very quick access to your camera. You can search your, through your photos, uh, search by date or place, or if you have any of these tagged or uh, tagged to your various contacts, you can search through 
and find photos associated with your contacts. You've also got a menu option here. It allows you to edit, uh, share these to Verizon Cloud, share these to your various social media accounts. You can animate those photos or make collages out of your photos as well. The files have been simplified here as well. You have quick and easy access to images, audio, videos, documents, applications, or your downloads. Uh, you have quick and easy access to local storage and SD card storage, and even quick access to your Google Drive account. There have been some changes to the camera app as well. Uh, this camera app is more like the Galaxy Note 7 version. Of course, you can swipe up to change to the selfie camera, or you can swipe down to change back to the rear facing camera. Swiping to the left gives you quick and easy access to all of your filters and then swiping back over to the right gives you quick and easy access to all of your settings. You have your auto setting, pro mode setting. If you go to your pro mode, it gives you options like ISO and white balance, panorama, uh, selective focus, which allows you to change the depth of field to give your photos a bokeh effect. You have a slow motion camera, hyperlapse camera, a camera that is specifically for shooting food. You can make a virtual shot, video collage, or even live broadcast. So you'll notice in your quick settings, you do have a toggle for performance mode. If you go into performance mode, you can either go into normal game, entertainment, or high performance. If we go into this high performance mode, it gives you maximum brightness, turns your screen resolution to QHD. This just gives you the best overall performance that this phone can offer, and you can quickly apply that there. Once you've applied that, you can easily go back in and change from the high performance mode back to your standard mode, the mode that you were previously in. Also, you'll notice in the display settings, you have a blue light filter that reduces the amount of blue light that's emitted by the screen, which limits eye strain. You can change your screen resolution, make it 720p or go all the way to QHD. Of course, the 1080p and 720p will reduce some of the battery consumption but now you do have the option to go full QHD. And then once again, you do have your always on display. Uh, there's not a lot of changes that have been made here, but you can apply custom themes to your always on display. As far as performance is concerned, I've been using this now for a little while and things seem to be running nice and smooth. I've not noticed any bugs or anything that would cause me to not want to use this as a daily driver, but just be mindful that it is a beta. Uh, most people are stating that they have seen performance improvements. The phone's getting to be about six months old now, and normally with TouchWiz, it begins to lag, it begins to slow down. But with this update, I'm not seeing any lag or slowdown. In fact, performance seems to have improved. As far as battery life is concerned, this does now include Doze on the Go, which is a new Nougat feature that allows your phone to go into Doze mode even when you're on the move. So if your phone's in your pocket, and the phone can recognize that it's not out being used or that it's not out on display and in a pocket or sitting in a cup holder somewhere, just not being used and inactive. Once Doze is enabled, it's going to limit the amount of traffic going to and from the phone and it will save battery life. And I've noticed an increase in battery life on this build. So I'm already at three o'clock. I still have 54% of my battery. And overall, I've seen an improvement in battery life. So overall, I have to say that this is a great update. I'm glad to finally be on Android 7.0 Nougat on the Galaxy S7 Edge. And if you're not already in the beta program, I will upload a video showing you how to install the beta build on your Galaxy S7 Edge. You don't actually have to be a part of the beta program and able to use it. Uh, be sure to be on the lookout for that. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel for more content like this in the future. You can find more of me at droidmoderx.com. Follow me on Twitter at droidmoderx. Thanks, guys, for watching. Be blessed. I'll see you in the next one.